Welcome to my YouTube channel, everybody. I am so excited to have you on today because I have a very special guest. Shannon Savoy is the CEO of NARC Free Living, and I am so excited to have her on here. I have coordinated and collaborated with Shannon before on her uh, channel, actually with her Chain Breakers University, and I'm so excited for you guys to get to meet her if you don't already follow her. She is an incredible woman in every aspect. We actually share a lot of things in common. We were both in the army. We both have, you know, our, our businesses that take people through narcissistic abuse recovery. But what I love about Shannon is that she is so powerful in the spirit. Her prayers will truly break things off in the spirit. And that is why I'm so excited to introduce her to you today. Shannon, thank you so much for being here with me today. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you, Angel. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. This is like a Kairos moment. You know, you have those moments where, yes. you know, it, I, I was watching you before um, and it was probably a while ago, uh, maybe even a, a few years ago when I was going through court with the narcissist and then you or um, you said, yes, you gave me your yes. And now I give you my yes. So it's just look how God works. I appreciate that so much. I appreciate your yes, for sure, to be here today, because what we're going to talk about with, with my audience, and hopefully your audience will see this as well, things that we go through, you know, during the holiday season is especially amped up, you know, when you're dealing with a narcissist, of course, there's never any, you know, normal moments, right. but it's especially heightened this time of year. And so what society has already done, you know, is kind of pulling us away from the reason for the season already. And the narcissist really can, you know, send us spiraling when we're trying to coordinate all of the things and do things for our children and try to have normal holiday events and make normal, you know, holiday memories with our kids. And we've got the narcissist coming in and, uh, and disrupting that. And, uh, you run Chainbreaker University, which is your monthly membership, um, your mentorship program. And I was just curious about your your members in there. Are they seeing this kind of thing? Yes. Um, so yes. So in Chainbreaker University, I mean, you see it all, right? Unfortunately and fortunately, you get to see it all, especially during the holiday season. And um, we just wrapped up this for the for the year with this iteration of the program. And before we wrapped up, one of the things that we talked about was the Hoover to make sure that they are prepared for, you know, what the narcissist does, you know, so that they can be on the, what is it? The offense versus playing the defense. So we, you know, both of us, we try to prepare our clients and, you know, our mentor or our mentees for what is going to occur. Now, when this happens, it's still going to shock you a little bit. It's still going to rock you a little bit, but it, it really helps when you have somebody that has been there, who has walked where you walked and, and can help you kind of guide you um, through all the emotions that come with the Hoover. Cause I, I still get Hoover from time to time. Um, by my family and it mm -hmm. it's still it's still it's out the blue it's so random when it happens so even if you're you know healing and you talk about these things it can still kind of jolt you a little bit but you you gotta you know learn how to process that learn how to self-soothe to bring you back to a point where you're centered um you know you're centered and it doesn't disrupt you know the rest of your day Absolutely. Yes. Working on letting five minutes that are, that are bad, be a five minutes that are bad instead of five minutes turning into your entire day and ruining everything that you had planned or even just your mindset, right? You might still be going through the motions and getting things done off of your list, but the whole time that you're doing it, you're really spiraling or you're just in a different place altogether. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so when, one one of the things that I I teach my clients, I'd love to hear what you teach your clients as well, and see if this can you know give people more ideas, right. is to think of things that they really want to make memories about, right? If that's opening gifts in peace with your kids, or you know cooking breakfast, or doing a big brunch, or doing a big Christmas dinner, or whatever in such a way that it is not the night that your kids come home if you share custody because what's going to happen the narcissist knows that you need them back by 6 p.m. what time are they coming back they're not coming back till 8 p.m. they're ruining your your time and so some of this is just saying 
I'm not going to schedule something for the time that they get home. When they come home, what we're doing instead, that's family movie night. That's pizza and a movie. That's low key something that if it gets disrupted, I can easily redo that throughout the week or however long they're with me. Right. Right. Um, And also planning in advance some, some lighter activities in Mm -hmm. case your children you know, needed longer detox period, because it's important that as adults think about how much emotion and how many thoughts you're having as an adult. How about for a little child who's still trying to process everything, right? And, and so having activities that they can easily switch out. So, okay, the kids don't want to go out to that holiday dinner party tonight. Okay, no problem. You know what? I already created this craft box. We can stay home and do this. Yeah. Do you teach your clients something like that as well? That's a great, I haven't, but now look, I'm taking notes from you. <laughs> well, I want to hear. Yeah, but <laughs> I would love to hear what you, how, how do you approach these kinds of things? Yeah, I was just what you said, like the goal is to keep it, you know, stress as much holidays are kind of stressful for a lot of people for yeah. a lot of different mm-hmm. reasons. So mm-hmm. if you can do what you said and to keep the stress down to a minimum. And uh, it was, it's some kind of saying, I can't um, remember exactly what it is, but it's like, don't be so in love with, you know, the method um, that, you know, like, like be flexible, be flexible, you know, Mm. so with, cause you, the outcome is really what matters. So if the outcome is spending time with your children, you know, so what if they may can't, you know, meet this schedule or meet this deadline or be here at this appointed time, the goal is to spend quality time to create your own traditions, you know, whatever that looks like to keep the stress down off of you and the children. And, uh, you know, when those situations come up, that uh, you, you're regulating yourself so that you're not getting so upset. And then you're teaching your children how to regulate their emotions, regardless of, you know, even if they're young, that's the perfect time. But even yes. if they're older, there are ways that you can unlearn what we used to do to relearn again. So learning to regulate those emotions when those situations do come up, when you are triggered, you know, get back to that place where you're, you know, where you're back centered in yourself. Um, and you're learning to regulate um, those emotions. So I would say just keep the stress down. Um, I teach keep the stress down to a minimum. Don't yes. be so, um, you know, wrapped around because I'm type A, but I have, I'm learning to be um, flexible, you know, because c- the goal is to be together and to spend quality time together. So I say that'll help you keep that stress down a little bit as well. Yes, Shannon, I think that's so important to to note is is the uh, not holding so tightly onto like it has to happen this way, which, right. you know, a, yes, assertive people have that uh, have that tendency, yes. but also <laughs> so do codependent people because they've been so out of control in a lot yes. of other ways that they want to control every aspect of their life so that there's nothing unexpected and everything looks a certain type of way. And, you know, it's right. just life is life, right? And we can't, right. we, we rob ourselves of joy when we try to hold on that tightly. And one of the exactly. interesting, yes, one of the interesting things about you specifically that I love is actually you're an INFJ. You're yeah. the rarest mm-hmm. personality type, but you're also, <laughs> your core personality type is an, is a, is assertive, which mm-hmm. is like the rare of the rare. Right. Wow. And, um, yes. And, and so actually that's one of the reasons that I do recommend people to go to your channel is because the majority of people who suffer from narcissistic abuse are going to be INFJs. And, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why your prayers are just so powerful, why you carry such an anointing for this in the spirit. I know that it's, you know, you, you obviously have authority over it because you've walked through it your right. own self, but I, I really truly appreciate how, uh, how instantaneous things move from your voice and how you really just take hold of your identity in this area. So um, thank you so much for, you know, being who you are and not shying away from your personality type, right? Because there's a reason why God made us all who we are and we need to celebrate that and really embrace it and cherish it and, and be free to, to show it to the world. So that's, it's just something that's so beautiful about you and your, your ministry, your business. Um, can I say something about absolutely, that? Absolutely, please. And it, 
It took me a long time um, to, I shouldn't say a long time. I've always, if I look back on it, like I've always, because I'm, you know, I'm raised to be a scapegoat, you know, um, mm -hmm. but um, there's always been something about me that would speak up for people who couldn't speak up for themselves. Wow. And I actually won a, a award a couple of years ago, a voice of the voiceless. And I know everything is, you know, nothing is happenstance. And so I've always been committed. And then I think part of it said that I was an advocate and I've always been an advocate for people for the underdog. Like I always root for the underdog. So, and I know a lot of people who are in this community are the same way, you know, being INFJs. What are you an INF, INFJ as well? I'm an ENFJ. Oh, okay. So you're more extroverted. I'm more extroverted. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm introverted. Like I have to go in, but yep. I can be ex like, people think I'm an extrovert. Like right. I would think you were an introvert. So it's like the opposite. That's yeah. so interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I So personality type is just one of many factors that make us who right. we are. So mm -hmm. I'm an extrovert, but I'm actually an internal processor. So okay, I it. don't process my thoughts out loud with other people, which some right. people who are introverts do process externally, but they just have right. their people that, you know, they like two or three people that they yeah, really need right. in their lives. Yes. Right. And so that's one of the things. And then attachment styles are very important, you know, in, in shaping who you are and all of that. And, um, I'm like, I don't know, like 87% secure. So I'm kind of like, right. whatever, you know? right. Right. And, I'm secure now. I think I was anxious avoidant. Okay. Before I really and, started feeling. Absolutely. I was avoidant. I was, mm -hmm. I was very much like, go away from me. Everybody right. just go away. Right. I right. can do it on my own. And, mm -hmm. you know, life will get lonely when you're, when you're doing it that way. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that you just never know, you know, unfortunately when tragedy is going to strike and you're not going to have this. And that was actually what, what changed things for me was I recognized how many people were willing to put their lives on hold and sacrifice something in their life to help me in my time of right. need where I was like, these are safe people. I don't need to, right. uh, I don't need to be like this, you know, one person show, you know, my, my right. world doesn't have to be that way. So, um, yeah. for me, that was kind of what, broke, broke through that where I was like, yep, people can come and people can go and everybody has free will and I'm okay with it. Mm. Isn't that so freeing when you can be, you learn to be vulnerable like that with the right people, yes. you know, so yes. that you're not pushing away like your, your destiny helpers. You're not pushing yes. away people, people who are really called to help you. Cause as much as there are bad people in this world, and we learned that there are good people um, in this world, we just have to have discernment so that we can weed them out. And the more we heal, we'll be able to recognize, you know, the, the not so good people from, you know, or the, yeah, the not so good people from the good people. So that's beautiful. Absolutely. Actually, you just posted something on your Instagram that I really liked. It was like the Bible can quote or the devil can quote the Bible. We need to have discernment. <laughs> <Right>. Like, <laughs> Uh, right. that is something that is especially true for, you know, spiritual, spiritually mm -hmm. abusive narcissists, mm -hmm. uh, people who are in the church, you know, who, who are l legit wolves mm -hmm. in sheep's clothing. Right. Um, and, and just being able to say like, you know, I hear what you're saying and those words are true, but that spirit, that's not true. This is right. not hitting me. Right. 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 And it's, and it's so hard. Um, it's, it's so disheartening to see people use God, use the Bible, use the pulpit, you know, whether, yeah. you know, clergy or in the congregation to use the Bible to keep people in narcissist abuse. And, and they were, you know, we remember that, you know, and people, yes. especially when we're, we're trying to figure things out, we don't quite know the word of God for ourselves. It's so easy to get led astray by a wolf in sheep's clothing. But I always tell people that narcissists, some narcissists, especially like covert narcissists, they love, um, and communal narcissists, they love using the church. Yeah. They love using oh, yes. the Bible, but they don't live it. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, about their image and the facade. So mm -hmm. they don't live it, but they will use it against you to keep you in bondage. So we have, we have a responsibility to know God and to know the word of God for ourselves. So we won't get, you know, led astray, but it's unfortunate that people do that. Yes, absolutely. No, I completely agree with you. One of the, when you send out an email, your tagline is, you know, if the sun has set you free, then you're free indeed, which is one of my favorite scriptures. Yeah. 
And, uh, and I heard a minister say it this way one time, which is that if you're not free in an area, then God hasn't invaded that space yet. And it's your responsibility to invite him to be king over that thing, whether that's finances, your relationship, you know, situations with your, your family members or your career, it doesn't matter what the area is. If you struggle with an addiction of any kind, and you know, that narcissistic abuse is an addiction, uh, literally changes the chemistry of your brain and, And so if you struggle with uh, any kind of thing like that, it's just about allowing God to come in so that you can be free indeed. Right. So good. And that's every area. And when you go through narcissist abuse, particularly, you're going to need every area. And that's why I'm big on holistic healing, you know, and that's what we did in CBU or do in CBU. So we start with the spiritual to break those covenants, to break those soul ties. And then we go to the, to the emotional um, and then we go to the psychological and then we go to the financial and then we go to their purpose and their calling. Cause it affects you in every area. And a lot of people will get stuck in an area, but if you submit that area, instead of running from God or running from your calling, if mm-hmm. you submit that to God, he will bring you into alignment so that he can heal it. And when we get triggered, that's actually an opportunity to be healed in that area. When I get triggered about something, I'm like, okay, this is highlighted. What is this trying to teach me? Yeah. What right, do I right. need to learn from it? I don't stuff it down anymore. I, right. you know, I allow it to pass through my body. I allow it to come up. And so I can get to the root of why I'm triggered by that. So, cause it's not the, it's not what happened. It's what it represents. And a lot of people don't realize mm. that. So the more you deal with those triggers, the more you can heal from them. That's so good. And you're exactly right. It's it's oftentimes not what happened. It's the story that we've told ourselves around what happened, right? This thing happened. And now somehow in my head, I've taken this on as like my new identity. They said this about me. Oh, that must be who I am. And now I got to go out and show everybody either that's not who I am, or I've somehow subconsciously, non-consciously embraced it. So I keep repeating that cycle, no matter you know, what I could have changed schools, can't change jobs, change re- relationships. You know, I'll tell people all the time, if you do not heal, you're attracting the same spirit in a different body, uh, same I spirit, different that today. Did you really? Yes. yes it, I mean, it, it, it is, it is just so, um, you know, unfortunately one of my clients a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, long story short, you know, she had come to me, uh, just messaged me when, when she was on like husband number three, Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually like three, four years later, she was on husband number seven, decided, okay, I'm, I'm doing the same behavior. I need to get yeah. free. And, yeah. and it is, it's, it's, we can, we can take the, the long way, the detour way, uh, yeah. when we're not willing to get set free. Right. And we're right. That's why we always have to examine when I got out of that, um, of being married to a sociopath, um, I went through domestic violence you know, physical abuse, emotional abuse, mm all of that. But, um, I had to learn like what it's not, of course, what he did was wrong, but it was something in me that, that not that I thought that this was okay, but, um, why, you know, why didn't I leave the first time I had to ask myself some very hard questions, you know, why didn't I leave the first time? Um, why did I tolerate not to, not to blame myself, but to take accountability with, um, within myself. And I had to sit back and look at my patterns, look at my uh, pathology. And then I realized that all of it had been operating in my life all along. It was just, he was what I call the coup de grace narcissist. Mm -hmm. He was the one that I, that I awakened spiritually, um, and in every way to, to what really was going on beneath the surface. So the sooner you can find out what your patterns are. I always say, examine the fruit, discern the root. There's a root. If you're with a narcissist, it's a symptom of a much deeper um, issue. And a lot of times we want validation um, from other people, but when you learn um, to, to, you know, that, you know, people can't make you or break you, you become what I call a bad woman or a bad man walking when you don't need other people's validation of you because you're already validated by God. Yes. Wow. Shannon, that's so powerful and really, um, you know, puts you in a vulnerable position in some ways, because you're having to have this hard conversation with your own self. You know, Mm -hmm. I, I also teach my clients that as well, that the narcissist, you should actually be thinking even uh, not again, 
val, you know, right, I'm not got excusing you. in any type of way because yeah. this is this type of abuse is the worst, in my opinion, type of abuse mm-hmm. because of the the mind games and the way that it tears down somebody's identity. But mm-hmm. that you should be thanking them because you were tolerating things in your life and accepting things in your life long before the narcissist, the narcissist, man, they just figured out how to, how to use those things that you kind of been collecting, not really dealing with and using it as an opportunity to get close to you. But, but truth be told, these were things that were happening before the narcissist. And so if you're trying to get like a lot of people say, I want to go back to right before I met the narcissist, like that's not far enough back, (laughs) you know, we, and, and we can't go back. So instead, what we're going to do is really just discuss where we are right now, learn from, get wisdoms from the lessons that we've already went through. So we don't have to experience that again in order to get the wisdom the second time. So good. And people, and that's something that people always say, well, I want to go back to the old me. I'm like the old me. Shannon, that was Shannon. Mm. Look, 2016, Shannon. No, I'm I'm not going back. She, listen, I've been born again. She she's gone. I'm Shannon. Yeah. I said this the other yeah, day. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. 5.0 now. Like mm. I've evolved. Like the that old me tolerated. The old me was codependent, operated, didn't have um boundaries, didn't know, didn't have an identity really. Um, it was tied up in a lot of other things. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to the old me, the old me. I want the new improved me, not the old me. She tolerated it. She had a high tolerance for oh. BS, and I don't have that anymore. I'm patient. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have tolerance for abuse anymore. Shannon, that is so powerful. That's exactly right. And I think, I think so much about your story and my story as well. It, it should be showing people, listen, I, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't go back for anything. I would not go back for these, for these old things. Yes, it was a long road. Yes, it was a hard road. Uh, yes, a lot of, a lot of inner, inner work had to get done. A lot of hard conversations with myself. It took, I really had to take a really long, many, many, many. And even to to this day, sometimes I'm like, wow, that's interesting. I had a belief about that because evolution will, will force you to pull up these, uh, these roots, right? Okay. It's like that every, every time, right? You own a company. And so every time you try to do something new with your business, you're going to find some other thing where it's like, I had a bad belief about business or about money or about networking or about what I'm capable of or whatever it was, right? Yeah, so good. And those beliefs, if you don't heal them, it's going to show up in business. It's going to show up in ministry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was like, oh my goodness, I need to tighten up my business boundaries. Like, and I said, and I was fasting the other week and I was like, God, I was like, the problem isn't outside. It's inside. I said, what do you do when the warfare is internal? I said, I'm the problem. <laughs> like I was hearing something. I was holding me back from my next level. It wasn't the enemy. It wasn't a narcissist. It was some, it was an inner belief that I had taken on. It was a fear and oh, fear yes. is an immobilizer. If fear yeah. is one of the greatest weapons that Satan and the narcissist use to keep you bound. And so it is so important to address those beliefs and get to the root. But those, those limiting beliefs will truly limit you if you allow it, but we're not going to do that. Absolutely. We're not going to do that. So one of the things that I also love, even we kind of hit on it a little bit while we were just talking right now is um, I, I also believe in holistic, you know, spirit, soul, and body healing. Mm-hmm. And, and along with that is embracing these deeper uh, levels of identity. And the majority of my clients are women and you only accept women in your CBU, but you do take one-on-one clients who are men. Yes. Um, and so recently I started, um, incorporating, you know, your divine feminine and the divine masculine, even for women to understand, here's how a healthy masculine man is going to show up because I hate the word toxic, uh, toxic masculine. What is it? Toxic masculinity. Toxic, right. And it's a, like a buzzword right now. Right. <laughs> and there's no such thing. It's the lack of masculinity that's toxic. Mm, so that's when we try to say like, how could you say toxic femininity? There's no such thing like feminine, right. feminine energy is healing. It's expansive. Mm-hmm. It's creative. There's nothing toxic about that. It's toxic for you to think that that's toxic. Right. Mm-hmm. But when, when we have women who are only showing up, you know, aggressive, who are o- over controlling, who are mo- trying to mother their, their partner, or, you know, even people that they work with or, or who are underneath them in business or at their job space, 
then yes, that's toxic, but that's not feminine, you know? And so uh, I I wanted to kind of address this really quick um, Mm -hmm. or before we move on to the next topic, because I think one of the things that happens is when people are healing and they're doing all of this work, they're really getting together their finances, they're figuring out who they are, they're identifying the lies, they're doing all of this stuff. It's still narcissistic, you know, 101 season because narcissists are out in full effect during the holidays. And there's that's just the fact because they see it as you know, their stage. Oh, look at all these events that I can mess up and look at all of the things that I can try to wiggle my way into and look at all of the ways I can pull on people's guilt strings or whatever. And so the narcissists are going to absolutely be pushing your buttons this season. And, um, and so for women who have been doing this work, they're trying to really lean back into their femininity, embrace their, their God-given role of, you know, showing up as someone who is ready to receive, not just this person who's out to like get, grab, you know, dominate, control, all of this stuff. The narcissist can really start to push you back into that masculine energy or your wounded masculine energy. And Mm -hmm. so I wanted to kind of talk to you about that. What what do you see with your clients around this season and in terms of like, do you have clients who are still like, how do I remain feminine during this time? How do I embrace this part of who I am? Right. And it all, and yeah, absolutely. And it, it goes back to, you know, um, those boundaries you have to, and set, we always say set boundaries, but you have to always enforce them too. And then if you, if you don't feel worthy that's going to, whatever you feel, you can tell yourself that you love yourself. You can tell yourself that you feel worthy. You can tell yourself that you're a feminine woman, but it's going to show up in your actions. So if you think that you're unworthy, that's going to show up also in how you co-parent or, you know, you don't co-parent with the narcissist, they counter parent. So you have to parallel parent, but um, it's going to show up. It's going to show up in how you view yourself. And so one of the things you have to do is set and enforce boundaries, right? And then you have to stick to them as much as you can, as much as you can, right? And it's not always um, going to be easy because the narcissist loves to pull on our heartstrings. They love to make us feel guilt. And so guilt and fear, you're going to have to conquer, you know, or, or work through those, um, you know, so that the narcissist can't pull you back. And so the boundaries are going to come in and um, when you um, discover, or um, how do I want to say this, when you really understand that how you're operating is not working. So if you're operating in a wounded woman, um, you know, your inner child is wounded, that's going to also show up. And so the wounded woman doesn't set boundaries. The wounded woman, um, um, you know, is fearful of speaking, you know, the truth. The wounded woman apologizes for who she is. Um, the wounded woman lacks self-worth and looks to others to, um, for validation. Um, the wounded woman is excessively dominating and masculine. When you say you mother, you know, you, your partner um, or you're the office mother, you know, things like that. So you got to first acknowledge how you're operating and then make a decision. Okay, this is kind of me, you know, takes care of one, men to their own detriment, um, so if that's you, then you get to make a choice. Well, I'm, I'm you know, this season, I'm going to really try to operate in, in as a, and show up as a healed, um, healed woman or a woman in healing. So you got to stick to the, set those boundaries, enforce those boundaries. And when that narcissist, I always say, keep your crown on. And that narcissist is going to do everything to take that crown off of your head, but you have to stay centered. You have to stay rooted in who you are and not allow the narcissist to pull you out side of what I call, I call it the kingdom, stay in the kingdom. Don't allow them to pull you out of yourself and out of who you are, because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to trigger your, the wounded inner child within you. So you got to stay centered in, in that femininity and just stay on the porch, stay on your perch, stay in the kingdom. Don't let them pull you outside of who you really are. Mm. That's really good, Shannon. I I like how you're describing boundaries, which are for yourself first. You need to be able to say to yourself, I'm doing this or I'm not doing this. Because if you lie to yourself, you will accept lies from other people. You will allow that boundary to get blurred with other people because you can't do it for yourself first. Mm -hmm. And, And I also teach my clients the same type of concept is that 
you, your boundary should be like a glass box that encase you and mm-hmm. people can say whatever they want. They can be pounding mm-hmm. on it as loud as they want, but they can't reach you. They can't get to you unless you decide you want to open the door and you want to either wow. let them in to that space or you go out of that space. You're so completely good. in control of that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. your feelings are, I mean, that, I know people think thoughts are very hard to like get, get control of and not do toxic rumination over, but Mm -hmm. honestly, you, I find it more difficult to master your feelings and you have to be disciplined about if I feel this way, I need to remember the truth and I need to shift my internal world immediately because that's not who God created me to be. That's not my portion. I'm not going to identify with that anymore. I'm not going to ruminate my feelings over that anymore. Right. And, and so learning to get into that different uh, space in your emotions is so important. You know, emotions, the word emotion means energy in motion, right? right? Energy in motion. So if Mm -hmm. I just understand, okay, this, yeah, I feel overwhelmed right now, but I allow that energy to continue to pass. It's in motion. It's passing right on through. And now I can go back to feeling uh, uh, secure, knowing that I have planned everything that I could possibly plan and the things that I can control, I'm okay with letting, letting go of those things and making room for, you know, miracles and other things to happen, right? Because a detour might not be a, such a bad thing this season. Right. And you hit it. I mean, mastering your emotions, especially after narcissist abuse, if you want to be a, a, a not a victim, not, you know, and turn to a thriver, mastering your emotions. Once you really master your emotions, it's like you, that's, I'm going to start using it. You're in the kingdom. You're in a, you're in a glass, you know, not a glass house, you know, biblically, no, but right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're in a glass case. Yes. And so you get to determine who you allow in there. And once you master that, once you master your emotions, you realize, like you said, it, it what people say, and you have to be built, like, especially being on YouTube and different things, people oh. say that like horrible things. So you have to, if you don't know who you are, what they say will break you down. So you have to be a master of your mind, um, master your emotions because the mind really is a battlefield. And if the narcissist knows that all they have to do is say something to get under your skin, they're going to do it every time. They're going to say the most horrendous, egregious things to you because they know that it triggers you. They love um, reactive abuse. They love getting you triggered. They love when they see that what they did triggered you. And when they can't get that reaction, it, it, it doesn't fuel them. So they'll either, you know, they'll try something else, but once they see that they can't get under your skin, they have no use for you because you don't give them what you want. But a lot of people, especially during holiday times, the narcissist will say something about the kids or whatever. And they'll they'll go back and forth and writing long text messages. Stop writing those long text messages. A narcissist does not care. And so once we can get things like that in our mind, you you master yourself. Don't try to control other people. Master yourself. You a bad woman, bad man walking. They they can't become untouchable in the spirit. You become untouchable in the natural realm when people can't be, you know, can't lure you out of your own, your kingdom. Absolutely. Oh, that's so good, Shannon. Yes, that's exactly right. And, and uh, learning how to communicate is a skill in life that you have to have. Learning to communicate with a narcissist is a skill you need to have in life, whether you are dealing with a narcissist actively on a daily basis or not, because there, there are narcissists around there. I can't control if I bump into one. I can't control if I'm a target of one. I can't control if I'm a victim of one. And so when I learn how to appropriately not just have boundaries and enforce them, but communicate them in That's such a right. way that that uh, puts the narcissist in a position where they are having to do so much work in order to try to keep me as a target, listen, they're not going to do that. They're Mm -hmm. moving on. They're moving to a different person, right? And yeah, Mm -hmm. it can take them several months. It could take them several years to learn that. But all of that is just an opportunity for you to grow. And really, that's how I look at things right now in my own life. I I have several other businesses and I have another business where I am truly dealing with a narcissist and they're a narcissist, their attorney's a narcissist as all the other things, Right. but it's, it's an opportunity for me to grow my authority over this spirit and That's also right. to just expose, you know, the, the patterns of behavior, because I'm sure that this person has done this to other people as well. And yeah. justice 
comes sometimes through through these means of like you know messing with the wrong person who already knows how to deal with this exactly right i'm so sorry you're in that situation but <laughs> we already know you have the authority you have the authority yeah. so yeah they'll try to get under your skin but you're right it is a lesson when you talk to one and you know i i'm, I'm sure i deal with some somewhere in my life but it does teach you how to um, effectively communicate. And then narc speak, you know, you kind of master how they speak and you see how they talk and how they operate. So they become even more, and it's not so we can diagnose them, but it's so, it's so easy, you know, once you, yes. you know, you've been in this a little while to, to determine how they talk, how they interact, the things that they do, you can kind of, you know, gauge how they're going to operate in business, especially. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, so I want to talk now to the person who, cause we kind of addressed the person specifically the, the woman, but I mean, it could be applied to a, to a man as well. You know, I think that that men need to learn how to stay in their masculine energy as well. When maybe you're dealing with a feminine, a female narcissist, who's trying to pull you out of that. Like you're going to be here. You're going to show up here. This is what you're going to do and try to dictate to you. You still need to have boundaries. You still need to do everything that we kind of talked about as well. But I want to talk to the person now who, who maybe is alone and feeling isolated during this time of year, because, um, you know, when you experience narcissistic abuse, you may have very well had to cut ties with your family, or perhaps you were, excommunicated, you know, by your family, maybe your family cut ties with you. And mm. maybe you're a grandparent who doesn't get to see their grandchildren, or you're a parent who doesn't get to see their children, or you're a sibling who doesn't get to see their siblings or their parents or whatever the situation is for someone who, um, who is feeling really alone and isolated. Um, you know, what do you think about the mindset and the emotions that somebody should have if they find themselves being one of these types of people? Um, I would say, um, keep in mind that um, if you're a believer, like you're, you're never alone, right? The Holy Spirit yeah. will be your comforter. Um, and then outside of that, understand that everything is seasonal, right? So um, I'm, in, I'm no contact with my whole entire family, like except for two people. Uh, my mother's um, very narcissistic. And I don't say that to, you know, berate her or anything like that. It's just the truth. Right. Um, and so I made a choice to go no contact, um, you know, after a series of events happening. And I said, you know, enough is enough. And, and much like Abraham, God pulled me out um, of my familial system. And it's while it was hard at first and it, it broke my heart, you know, it, it wasn't an easy decision to make. Um, but I had to understand that I had to make this decision for myself. And so um, I will say it may be a time where you go through what we call the wilderness and what I call spiritual intensive care. You're going to go through a season possibly where you do feel very alone and very isolated, but this too shall pass. And eventually the more you heal, the more you get rid of the wrong people, the more the right people um, start to come into your life. So there was a season where it was just me, my husband and my children, you know, for, you know, when, um, you know, different occasions and different things would come up. And then now we're in a season where God has brought our church family, brought different people um, into our lives, different friends that I've met um, from the narcissist abuse community. So your circle changes, but for a while it is when you're all, you are going to go through a season of isolation because your circle has to change because you're getting rid, rid or you know, not rid, but you're, you're evolving. So your circle has to change. And the more you heal, you're going to start surrounding yourself with healthy people. Um, so I would say, just understand that this, it may be a season, but you're not alone. There are many survivors out here who go through, you know, learn to navigate the, the holiday season season specifically, um, you know, alone, or they either learn to, um, you know, uh, it may, you may not be with your core or your biological family, but now you have an opportunity to pick, to pick who you want to be your family. And so that's what I've done. I don't have my biological family, but I have a spiritual family and I have people now that I get to call, you know, brothers and sisters, and they actually act like brothers and sisters. So I'll say, just, just keep in mind that you're not alone. Um, that this too, um, it, it will pass. And the more you heal, you'll begin to attract or more healthy people will begin to come into your life, but you're not really alone. 
Yeah, that's so good, Shannon. I always say you have two families. You have a blood family and a soul family. Sometimes yeah. they're the same. Sometimes they're they're different. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I agree. The wilderness season is actually preparation. And I think uh, a lot of people prolong that by not embracing it for what it is. Okay, mm-hmm. this is the preparation time. I need to use this and look at it as a blessing for me to really see what are these things that are keeping me from this life that I really desire to have. And because everything like attracts, like, like uh, you, you said that earlier, I agree with that completely. You attract what you are, not what you think you are, you know? And so when you're a fully healed person, you will absolutely start attracting the the healthy people. In fact, I have a video call where are all the healthy people? Cause everybody is like, well, where do I find these people? <laughs> Well, listen, you will know when you're a healthy person, it's Mm -hmm. like, I don't go to, you know, a football game expecting to, to get treated from a doctor. That's not the right Right, environment. I go to a hospital because that's where the doctors are. The doctor's office, that's where doctors are. And so, you know, when I am aware of where I am going and what I am doing, sometimes God puts you in a wilderness season so that you stop liking those toxic environments and try to keep going there, expecting to get healed. Hey, listen, that baseball game is not what you need. (laughs) You know, you need a doctor. They're in a different environment. So embracing it and just understanding, yes, this is a season, but I'm going to embrace it because it's part of my life and I can't take it back. I can't get rid of it. Right. Right? This is part of, part of who I am. And it's part of who my story, I'm not going to just wish it away or wish I didn't have to do it because it is part of your story. It is part of your life. And the more you do the work, the more space you're preparing for those healthy people, the, the soul family that God is going to bring you. Absolutely. And you know what? Sometimes I do, especially around Mother's Day and different um, holidays. Sometimes I'll get off social media, you know, Uh I just won't won't, um, get on there because I know now I can I can get on there more. But especially when I first, um, you know, went no contact um, because I would see, you know, all the families and all this. And I said, you know what, for this, you know, maybe for a couple of days, I'll just do a detox. I won't go on social media as much. So you have to do whatever you, you know, you need to do healthily to protect um, your peace, to maintain your sanity. And then, you know, narcissists really love to use social media um, Mm -hmm. during um, this season to make people feel like outcasts because they feel like you're watching them. So a lot of times they'll do things purposely, um, post things purposely to make you feel, um, especially if you're watching now, stay off their pages, please stay off their pages, please, please to to block and delete. (laughs) <laughs> block and delete okay stay off their pages okay don't do a reverse hoover okay <laughs> <laughs> don't become a reverse monitoring spirit so you stay <laughs> off their pages as well because it's it's all a lie anyway it was a lie when it was when we were with them and it's going to be a lie after we leave them so their whole life is a handcrafted illusion so if you want to stay out of narcland that means staying off of their social media pages to maintain um, your sanity, to help you maintain your sanity. Absolutely. Yes. I think that's such good advice. Instead of, um, instead of thinking about like, oh, I wish I was doing this, or I wish I could be doing this and trying to fill that void with this, like, uh, you know, very, very facade based kind of thing. I'll check and see what other people are doing, or the narcissist is doing actually see what, what, what do you need to do, do for yourself? So if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling lonely, if you're not feeling beautiful or loved or whatever, create an agenda for you that is going to fill those spaces. You know, I don't feel beautiful or I don't feel loved. Have a day where you're doing an at-home spa day if nothing is open or maybe you're going to the spa. I don't, it's it's what whatever is going to fit for you where it's like, this is a season and I'm fully embracing it. Not just going through the motions, not just like filling up my schedule with time, but I'm actually filling this hole that, that I am filling right now. And I'm allowing God an opportunity to come in because sometimes we do fill our, our schedule with distractions. It doesn't give the Lord a time and opportunity to come in and actually heal that space. Right. Absolutely. And you said it earlier, like it's not a punishment. It can seem like a punishment to be alone, um, to be, you know, that wilderness season, but it's so needed. I don't, um, I knew, and and I had, I guess, a God gave me a sense of peace when I was going through it. Um, cause I was, you know, it was just me and my children at the time. Um, and I was going through a lot of, um, depression. I mean, I was diagnosed with everything. I mean, 
list every, every depression, anxiety, um, ADHD, like everything um, I was diagnosed with. Um, I was hyper vigilant um, because of all the things that, you know, stalking involved, I have a restraining order, just so many things. And then I had to learn that the body, like God made our bodies to be self-healing. If we allow, and I yes. needed to rest because I had been through so much sleep deprivation and um, I had, you know, been through so much physiologically and I needed that time to rest. And I was looking at it at first as if, you know, oh, I couldn't get a job or this, but I realized that God had set me down in the wilderness so that I could go, you know, do cognitive behavior therapy so that I could go, you know, learn how the brain works so that, cause my mind was really jacked up. And so I needed that time to heal. And that part of that was in that what people call the isolation isolation season. So it's all about reframing how you look at things. So now I don't look at it when I go through a period of wilderness or a trial. It, if you can reframe that and, and look at it differently, there's something in that that we're supposed to learn and take from. And so if you can, you can, you know, dig in and do your work, it'll make a whole lot of difference on the other side. And you'll be glad that you had that time. Oh, so good, Shannon. I completely agree with this as well. You know, I'm big into somatic healing. So go research somatic exercises. I'm big into understanding how your vagus nerve operates, mm -hmm. your sympathetic, your, par your parasympathetic nervous system, and how to shut that off and how to get back into your sympathetic. And all of this, again, goes back to being able to rest as a, as a woman, it, it, receiving is the most natural state. It, you look at every a single aspect of a, of a woman. In fact, you know, the story of Adam and Eve, you know, Eve come from was, was his rib. He, she mm -hmm. already had a resting place. She already was at a state of rest. In fact, the, the word says he put a deep sleep over Adam because women were created from rest in the, in the very beginning. If you cannot rest and you're a woman, if you feel guilty for sitting on the couch, for going on a walk, for sitting in your hammock, sitting on your porch, whatever, th listen, there's something skewed about your identity and we need to get back to healing your body. Your body is dictating your life instead of your mind telling your brain to tell your body what to do. So we have to get back into a place of rest because it's the most natural thing for a woman to receive. And actually that's something I was going to mention earlier is what if this season, yes, you, we all want to be the hostess with the mostess. I love hosting. I love mm -hmm. cooking. I love <laughs> doing the things. Um, but it truly is from a place of love. Now I don't feel like I need to do it. <laughs> Um, what if this season you decided you're not going to do that and you're just going to receive, you're going to accept invitations to somebody's house or somebody's event without feeling like I need to now, you know, I owe them or I need to upstage somebody's, you know, yeah. event next time or whatever. What if you just gladly received and you just went in, in, in order to enjoy the environment that that host put on? specifically for you to enjoy. And so there's something that could shift about your mindset this season, instead of seeing how many parties we can fit in or do the kids do all of this stuff. And is their costume for the play, the best one and the most one in the thing, you know what, like, are your children enjoying it? And are you enjoying the process? Are you receiving this time as a gift with your kids? Or is this something that's checking, you know, just another thing that you got to check off your list. It's a duty, you know? Sure. That is so good. And I have a, well, she's a mentee, but now we've grown to be, you know, friends, sisters in Christ. And she said this year, she's taking her children to, I think she said Fogo the Child or something. She's doing yes. something like, she's not, you know, she's not cooking. She's not cleaning. Like she said, they're going to do their own thing. And I love that. Yes. I love that. And this is like every month I have a prophetic word that God gives me. And this month, my word was ease. Oh, it's, I love that. Yes. Yes. Cause, and, and I'm still learning, like I'm still healing. Right. And so, um, that is an area where God is really dealing with me on is how to rest, how to rest, how to not fill up my to-do list all the time. Like it's okay. And so I've taken this month specifically just to you know, trying to scale things, scale things back. So I think that's needed where you figure out what you need. I fi I figured out I need time with me. <laughs> hmm. I, I need time with me. And so if, that, if that's what you need, you know, and I know a lot of people when you're, it depends on what stage you're in, you know, because sometimes you're, you know, you're in a stage where you're, 
um, in that season, you're overcoming a lot. So that may not be your season of rest, but you have to find rest in that season. Yes, yes, yeah. mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. And, you know, it, it, it can be, it can be that that we've some sometimes made a, a home in a place where we should have made a campsite, right? And mm-hmm. so maybe we need to move it along now and that season needs to be done. And in that case, then we need to really start looking at why have I not done these things and set yourself up for success by writing down the things and the steps that you're actually going to take. Start making commitments to yourself because uh, because we can often, we're very good at coming up with reasons to convince ourselves of why we're doing something. Well, I can't see them because, you know, such and such happened or they're such and such. Okay, that's fine. But again, you have two families. So what about your soul family? What are you doing to find them? What are you doing to connect with them? You know, are you are you putting yourself out in places where you're going to meet healthy people? Are you have you actually shifted your lifestyle from being one of just, you know, wandering the wilderness to being one of connecting and being with family, being around healthy people. Cause you know, people are not just going to come and knock on your door. Like, hello. They're are not. You a- <laughs> They're not. <laughs> I mean, that, that kind of would be great, but also no. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's so good. And the more your mind shift and it does, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. Yes. Like when I, okay. So let's talk about this for just a second before we wrap up, I think. Um, but, uh, so when I came out of the wilderness, it was like the world had changed. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to us through a season. I don't want to say I had agoraphobia or anything, but I didn't want to go outside. I only went to my appointments to take my kids to school um, to the store. My life was very sheltered because I was in a very hyper um, vigilant um, stage, but I had to come out the more I started to heal. And you're, you're going to get that unction when it's time for you to go to the wilderness, back into the world, back to be integrated back into society again. Um, so God had to show me, okay, now it's time for you to get out of your comfort zone. So I joined like um, Toastmasters. I didn't apply any of the principles. Wow. <laughs> but that's I, a great I, one that's a really right? good first step but that is like that's they're like that the major best for me angel <laughs> yes. that was major for that's me that's a huge step yes to go into that meeting with people that um we were from all different walks of life but I made up in my mind that I was going to do something I was going to stay committed I was going to be consistent with whatever I committed to and I went to the meetings and I enjoyed myself you know so I did that for a season And then it was just, you know, and then from there, everything else ticked off. So it's going to be something that um, God is propelling you to do to get outside of the comfort zone when it's time for you to get out of your wilderness, out of your wilderness season. And that's when you're going to begin to meet those healthy people that you have been really searching for. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. And oftentimes those people that you're going to meet are actually lining you up for your purpose in that season. That's how it was for me. I think it sounds like that was the case for you as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, I started going to business events and I started doing those types of things where I was And I still try to be like the dumbest person in the room. I need to learn things. You're a doctor. You're a whole doctor. I, uh, yeah, but, (laughs) but I, I I have a PhD, but I, I, I don't, I by no means am the, in the Mm -hmm. best business person. And I really do. I love all types of things, health, healing, and I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a health coach. Right. So I will Mm -hmm. put myself in a place where I'm going to learn from people who lo- are passionate about what they do, they love what they do, and they're experts in what they do. Because I, I'm an expert in what I do. You're an expert in what you do, and I want to be with other experts, people who are who are doing things with excellence. I love yeah. that. Um, and but that's constantly what I'm doing. But it started because, and that was also very humbling for me because I come out of advising a four star general and also being in academia. So I'm I'm the boss of a lot of things. And that was humbling for me to come into a place where I don't know anything. I I was going, I went to school at a tech school. I already had a PhD. I was going back to school at a tech school and, but it was really connecting me to my purpose and my, you know, and my whole life shift happened then. Yes, you will have to be humble is my point is, and, Mm -hmm. and hopefully that becomes something that you just love to do and that you embrace it because that part of yourself is healed where it's like, you know, I can evolve and I can learn in this area. 
Yeah, that's beautiful, Angel, what you just said. And I think the same way. Now I'm going to show up like I belong there, you yes. know, but it's still yes. humbling, you know, like, just like you said, you should not be the smartest person. If I'm the smartest person in the room, um, I don't know what to say about that room, you know? Yeah, I'm in but, the wrong room. I say that all right. the time, unless I'm being paid to be in the room because I'm a speaker or something. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have any, I'm uninterested. Right, right. And we can learn from anybody. So that's yes. so they always say that the humble don't stumble and the bold don't fold. So Ooh. stay humble, stay like humble, you know, and learn. And then don't feel like, don't let that imposter syndrome set in either. You're going to have to conquer that as, um, as yes. well. You know, yes. You have all those thoughts saying that, you know, you, 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 you don't deserve to be there. If, if you're in that room, you deserve to be there. Learn. Absolutely. The room. Yes. That's so good. Yeah. And, and I feel that's just about embracing God's mm -hmm. word over your life. You know, his identity is the only one that matters. Even my, I don't have the right to have thoughts about God that he doesn't have about me. So I'm going to embrace that and show up and, and be ready to do that the best that I can. And, and I love that for you as well. Before mm -hmm. we, before we go, what if he, what, if anything, could you just share with the, with the viewers one last final thoughts or, uh, you know, an affirmation or just a kind of thing that if they only take away one thing from this interview, what is that thing that you would like them to know? Um, since we were talking about this season in Hoover season, I'm going to start there and then I'm going to end up wherever God takes me, but I want you to understand, especially with the Hoover season, that it's not about love, that it's not about them missing you, um, that it's not about them realizing that they made the biggest mistake of their life. It's not about, you know, now they woke up and they want to keep their family together. Um, it is about establishing uh, dominance and control over you. It is about making you second guess your decision to go no contact. It is about getting your, your feathers kind of ruffled and getting you to sign up for more abuse and future faking. So just keep everything that we talked about. I pray that there was something that you can take away from this conversation, whether it was on femininity or, you know, um, establishing those boundaries and, and keeping them or, you know, about the Hoover season and knowing that you're not alone. So you have to keep in, in mind what the narcissist is here for. And that is to derail you from God's purpose. The longer you stay in that situation and in that state of mind, the more it pulls you away from your destiny um, in your in your calling. So um, it's going to take some time. Um, I got out in 2016. I went no contact with my relatives in 2020 at the height of, uh, before COVID hit. And um, it, I, I'm going to say it, it, it was the best de decision that I made for me. And that may sound cold, um, but I, I came from an unhealthy system. And as long as I stayed in that system, I was going to continue to um, get what that system gave me. And I made a decision to stand on, you know, God's word to stand on and know that I was enough to stand alone. Um, so you're going to be okay. You're going to make it. It may be a little rough at first, but you're going to, if you continue to be consistent and put God first and put your healing first, you're going to, you're going to be more then okay. So I pray that something we said helped you and God bless you. Yes. Thank you so much, Shannon. If you would like to join Shannon's Chain Breaking University, you can find the link in the description of this video. You can connect with her on all social media platforms. Again, they're all linked in the description of this video. Join one of our communities, get involved, surround yourself with people who are going to help elevate you, who are going to align with your destiny, not your history alone, and who are going to really inspire you to embrace your identity and to help you as you walk that out, because it is a process, like you said. So Shannon, thank you so much for taking the time and speaking with my viewers today. I truly appreciate it. And Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for having me. You're such a blessing. Oh, same to you. Same to you. Thank you so much again. And I'll talk with you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now.